everyone has spent weeks now discussing campus protest over Israel's war in Gaza. The right all of a sudden doesn't lack free speech, and the left all of a sudden is encouraging protests like they did in 2020. In short, we all know Congress is owned by the Jewish lobby. However, regardless of how you feel about the Israel-Gaza situation, I'd like to posit a new thought to you. Can't Americans find a better way to protest? It's kind of lazy to just hang around and chant all day. And come on, it's a great excuse for students who already don't want to be in class in the first place. The fact that universities are expelling kids for protesting is pretty idiotic. What a great excuse to not attend class, skip a semester, or entirely drop out of college. It's not their fault. They were forced out. It's like when K-12 through schools suspend students. Isn't that rewarding them for their bad behavior? Who wants to go to public school? Likewise, who wants to listen to some college professor and bear their delusions of grandeur every week? So here's what I'm suggesting. A whole new method to protesting. There was this movie that I watched when I was a kid. It came out in 1998. I often think of it when protests break out. Granted, this was a Christian straight-to-VHS release movie, so don't get too excited about it. I was little and probably didn't recognize how cheesy and corny the acting was, but nevertheless, it was a cute concept. It centers around an older man named Jake. After school, all the neighborhood kids would come to his house to hang out. They all loved him. Yeah, there's a hint of racism. The man is black, he wears overalls, and lives in a rundown cabin. But again, a bunch of white Christians made this movie. So just bear with me. A developer wants his land, but the guy refuses to move. In retaliation, the city raises property taxes on this guy's cabin so he can't afford to live there anymore and is forced to sell. All the kids are mad about it, so they get together and try to figure out what to do. They were called Jake telling them stories about the civil rights movement. The kids decide they have to protest to save his house. Since they're limited as kids as to what they can do, they stumble around about it for a while. Finally, it hits them no more baths. They're going to refuse to shower until the city stops and lets Jake keep his home. If they can gross out their parents and all the other adults in town and city council, then maybe the city will cave. Shock, shock, it works. I wonder what would happen in this country if adults protested by going on a bath strike. Can you imagine a bunch of college students going to class without a shower day after day after day? I mean, have you smelled a 19-year-old boy when he doesn't shower? Do you know what girls look like when they haven't washed their hair in weeks? The collective odor of these kids would be enough to bring a university's administration to their knees or their nostrils. Just think if the Black Lives Matter protests were just a bunch of people not showering in the dog days of summer in 2020. What if all the January 6th people just stopped showering and then hung out in government buildings? What if the Democrats protesting Israel showed up to the Democratic National Convention in August after not showering for weeks? What if protesters ditched their signs and sit-ins and instead attended a session of Congress after weeks of no baths? What if instead of blocking bridges, protesters gathered in public places all stanky? What if commentators went into television and broadcast studios reeking? What would critics say? It's not violent. It's not prohibiting anyone from getting around. It would get a lot of attention for the cause. Besides, what a great parallel. Palestinians have almost no water to drink, let alone bathe in. Not showering isn't against the law, and no one can accuse you of hate speech for it. Everything would just be a little bit smellier. Maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't. But I can guarantee you one thing. It would be hilarious. Mark your calendar for July 25th through 27th. Ladies Love Politics will be attending the Bitcoin 2024 conference. Join me online as I cover the event or grab a ticket and see for yourself the wonderful world of Bitcoin. Ladies Love Politics is a proud media partner of Bitcoin 2024. In the meantime, be sure to follow the Ladies Love Politics channel on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram.